What is up and welcome back to TF. The fuck? Toyota Fanatics, of course. Anyways, we got a lot going on today. Uh, I don't know if we should just start by jumping right into the uh, me getting pulled over incident or if we should save that for later. The year was 2003, the month April. So I went through a weird phase. I just bought a bunch of Chevys back in the early 2000s and I managed to get the cover of Peterson's four wheel and off-road magazine. Uh, I daily drove this 2002 HD, I bought it brand new. If you're one of my longtime subscribers, then you've heard me say that this, you know, you, when I got this from the magazine company back when uh, they sent it to me back in 2003, it was in the living room and then it was in the bedroom and now it's in the closet. So like I was saying, absolutely no stranger to getting pulled over. And, uh, and I knew I had a bunch of tickets sitting around. I probably got pulled over 30 to 50 times in that Chevy truck in the two years that I owned it. And, uh, and here's a ticket, mud guards, uh, display license plate, license plate light. Look at this ticket. I, I, I'm seriously not a hoarder, you guys. I do not keep a lot of stuff. A very simple life I live, but this is from 1-15-2003. I don't know why I have that. I just, I have a big file cabinet for all things automotive. So anyways, I found some other really cool stuff while I was in there and I want to show you guys. Bought a Mustang Bullet brand new back in 2000, oh, it was a 2001. And, uh, and I just saw it on Facebook Marketplace the other day. The actual same bullet that I bought brand new. I mean, it even had a bunch of this custom stuff that I did to it. I'll try and find a pick and uh, show it to you guys right now. But, uh, but this is the window sticker for it. 27380 bucks. I bought this thing brand new. And uh, I hated that car. Another super crazy receipt, you guys, from back in the day. Uh, I had a 2003 GMC Sierra. I told you I bought a brand new Tahoe, a brand new HD, and uh, a brand new GMC Sierra. And I, uh, I went with some uh, 305 40 22 uh, Nitto Extreme Force tires. These were 325 a piece. And a 22 by 95 Bozo B4s. These, these wheels were $730 a piece. You guys, this is back in 131 2003. Well, look, this is almost 20 years ago. This was $4,561 I spent on 22s for that truck. I'm dead serious. Another ticket from back in the day. This is for transparent material. Transparent mat. That was my license plate that I had on the truck right there. It says it was UNOUNV. It's two things I found in there, and I, I didn't even know I had these. Um, I haven't looked in that file in a really, really, really long time, but this is the Toyota product lineup. I mean, this is this is from Japan right here. I didn't... This is how much of a Toyota fanatic I am. I have weird stuff like this that... Sitting around, look at a Corsa, it's a Tercel right there. A Previa, it's a Estima. This is crazy, look at this, forklifts and uh, tractors. This is wild, I don't know exactly what year this is. But they even sell houses. Look at that, Toyota sells houses, you could buy these houses and they even have names. Look at the Larch, the Foray, Aspen, Cedar. That's amazing. Yeah, this is this is pretty cool. Anyways, this other thing I found right here too is this uh, 1979 Toyota Cars and Trucks lineup, and it's printed in 1978. This thing right here feels like it is brand new. I I can't even believe it. This thing is like you you could pick this thing up on the showroom floor tomorrow, and you think you think it was printed last week. Unbelievable. I didn't even know I had these. It's pretty cool. Uh, my dad has a real good friend who used to travel to Japan all the time uh, when I was really young, like 15, 16. He knew I was into Toyota, so he got me a bunch of cool little stuff like this. Um, I actually have a lot more. I've, I have some really cool stuff uh, just from Japan for um, Toyota novelty stuff. I'll definitely show it to you guys sometimes, but I think that's where these came from. I want to address something. There's a couple uh, subscribers out there that always ask about this, this four-wheel drive shifter thing, and I cannot believe I haven't addressed it yet. But I got a plan. I'm gonna buy uh, this little part. Actually, I ordered them up yesterday. They're coming from eBay. And uh, and that is going to go inside here. 10 by 1.25, and I guess that's a pitch. And that is the, uh, the, the thread type size, whatever on here. It's gonna sit back right there. And then I'll put a double threaded piece right here and put a shift knob on it. And it seems like it's gonna stay out of the way. And that should uh, work. I would like to get a hold of an actual OEM piece. I've been looking for them on uh, eBay and all over and they are pretty expensive. I don't know if it's worth it for me uh, just to have this piece look like that. I don't know, we'll see. But we're getting on this soon. 
While we're in here, I noticed the other day that all the seat belts are supposed to face out. And this one's facing in right here. Don't you just kind of like fold it over on itself and pull it through? Let's see if we can do this. <sighs> Much better. While we're dealing with seat belt stuff, this thing is messed up. Somebody left me a comment and said that they had the same issue on their T100 and they just lubed it up or something and it came back to life. So let's give it a shot. Oh, you see that? That stinks. That's the only bad thing we got. Let it sit. Obviously, it's a lot better, if not all better for the moment. But we'll just let it sit and let that stuff soak in and take it from there. I'm sure a lot of you out there right now know exactly what this is. This is a Pro Comp skid plate. And originally, it was like brushed aluminum. These things first came out in, uh, back to all the way to 1988, when Chevy decided to go to independent front suspension, and you could get a Pro Comp six inch lift, and I believe you could get this skid plate right here. I mean, it wasn't this exact one, but they had a different model number for, for many of these. And you could get one for an 88 through 98 Chevy truck. And, and these things were wildly popular for certain applications in the, uh, in the late 80s and 90s. And I loved them. I loved the way these Pro Comp Skid Plates looked. And, and I was always bummed um, that they didn't have applications. Like I had a Tundra in 2000 and they never made this for, for a Tundra. And, and other vehicles, I always had the wrong vehicle. I had a 4Runner and I had a six inch Skyjacker lift on it and I, this wouldn't work. Anyways, so this T100 uh, came with the skid plate when I bought it and you know I, I knew I was going to be ripping into every area of this thing so I just took it off through it in the backyard. But I'm wondering if you guys think I should throw this thing back on. Uh, I think it would look amazing now. Ideally it would be best if it was could be back to brushed aluminum or whatever it was but I think we're going to have to paint it up. I just don't know what color we should paint it. still have some of this Congo. A lot of people out there would say, hey, you should just paint it black, but I've never been a big fan of black stuff for, you know, suspension. Like, you, you, you might as well just go silver at least. It doesn't look too flashy, but... So, uh, I, I want to do a good job and I, I want to paint this thing, but I, I'm wondering if you guys think that uh, it looks better just like that. You know, you can see the steering stabilizers and uh, definitely leave a comment below. Should I put that thing on and uh, and what color should I paint it? Let's get back to me getting pulled over. Blow your mind with this plot twist, but this is the culprit right here that got me pulled over, not the T100. Um, this is my like lay low adult vehicle right here. And, uh, and yes, this thing got me in trouble. So do you guys notice anything missing right here? If you guessed the front plate, then you are correct. As much as it clashes with everything, I think the front plate is where it's at. All right, we're back. All right, so you're not gonna believe this. So this Sequoia, I think we've owned it seven or eight years. It's had a front plate on it every second of its entire life. Now, one month ago, I take the front plate off to take a picture for the thumbnail for a video I did a couple of videos ago. It looks so good that I thought, you know what, I'm gonna drive it for a while without the front plate. And uh, I got pulled over that night. <laughs> and so uh, it didn't last long. So no big deal, it was just a fix a ticket. As a matter of fact, uh, I was wondering where I was gonna find a police officer. And uh, the other day I was at the bank and I walked outside and there was one right there. And I said, hey, uh, will you sign off this fix a ticket for me? And he said, yeah. I got the coolest neighbors around here. Sequoia's like down on the other side of the parking lot and uh, and I like nudged to like, you know, bring him over there and he was like, hey, there's no way that you just motioned to bring me to a car to show me a front license plate if it doesn't have a front license plate on it. So it was signed off and uh, I was on my way. This guy was all right. Uh, anyways, no big deal. So tomorrow morning I'm gonna wake up and uh, head down to the uh, county building, I guess it is, and, and turn it in. And I, I think it's like 25 bucks or something. So we're gonna go take care of that and that'll wrap up that whole thing. Um, I haven't been pulled over in years. Um, I used to get pulled over all the time. And I mean, all the time. I'm telling you, I think when I was 20, 21, 22, it was like 10, 15 times a year. It was, it was pretty wild. Um, mostly, I, I did get a few speeding tickets, uh, but mostly it was just fix-it tickets. I mean, massive amounts of fix-it tickets, front window tent tickets. Jeez, I cannot even tell you how many uh, window tent jobs I have had to pull off and redo and phew, just been very fortunate lately. Maybe it's because I don't drive around in the middle of the night all the time like I used to, aimlessly. So yeah, the Sequoia is, uh, is the one that got me in trouble, but front plate's back on. That's gonna do it for this episode of Toyota Fanatics. Uh, if you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. Everybody drop a big old thumbs up and uh, stay tuned for more great videos. See how our, uh, our fix is holding up.
as good as new. Awesome. So you guys probably noticed when you were in here earlier, I got all these, I don't even know, how do you pronounce this? Is it Lays Fit, Last Fit? I don't know. I really like these these LED bulbs and I'm definitely not sponsored by them uh, in any way, shape, form. Now these are not the $100 bulbs, uh, but they're not the $15 bulbs. These are like the $30, $40, $50 bulbs right in the middle, right in that sweet spot where you get a decent product without spending a lot of money. Where I'm going with this is I actually switched out the bulbs on the T100. I swore I would never do it. I even left the old school halogens on the uh, the other T100, but I'm done with it. I need to be able to see, so I swapped these out. I haven't even driven it at night yet, but yeah, they work, and uh, I'm anticipating some better performance. <laughs> 